I'm excited to have two of the biggest names in the downtown Toronto restaurant scene joining us today, Mark McEwen and Michael Bonacci. Mark, I think I'll start with you for our first question. I'm really curious about what you're looking forward to about reopening for in-person dining in the financial district. Well, we're, we're uh, very anxious to see our clients back in the restaurant and, and see the momentum and the vitality in the restaurants. Uh, we've put all the protocol in place to make that happen and to make people feel comfortable and at ease. Uh, so all we need is a green light and uh, some encouragement, I think, from City Hall and and uh, all the big wigs and all the major companies downtown to encourage people to reoccupy their offices and get back to the downtown core. I think that's that's the, the one thing in the recipe that is missing is just people. And as soon as we get back to a uh, you know, even a 75 percentile volume, uh, there's a huge pent up demand for being out in a restaurant. So we've experienced just tremendous business at Weimark with only the patio. So um, I'm anxious to see when it all comes back as to how it falls together. But uh, we just want to see excitement back in the downtown core and, and, and see that momentum. When I, when I first went in, I would look at the underground and it, and it was like a trout stream with like a salmon spawn with with people you know up and down the hallways and now it's like a bowling alley with no one in it uh so we need to change that we need to change that fast and uh i can't wait to get it back very excited absolutely um i think that's in the works for sure it's a little more time to um to rebuild and i think we'll be seeing people back into the vibrant downtown that we know so well here what about you, Michael? What are you looking forward to in terms of your restaurants? I share many of the same sentiments that uh, Mark touched on. It, it, it will be so exciting to see the downtown financial core spring back to life. It, it, we're looking forward to bringing back our restaurant teams to do the things that they love doing and, to be honest with you, are exceptionally good at to showcase once again our lineup of uh, a variety of restaurants that we have to offer uh, down in the financial core. And, and as Mark mentioned, when you have a busy patio, and the patios have been busy since we've been allowed to open them, they add so much excitement, vibe, energy, and, and delight to, to any part of, of the city, and especially the downtown core. Uh, where we just want to spring back into life as soon as we possibly can. Um, it's it's there, we can taste it, it's just around the corner, so to speak. I think the enthusiasm from uh, dining guests, they just want to get out and eat, whether it's on a patio, indoors, private dining room, they're, uh, they're, they're game for it. And uh, yes, we'll have all the necessary precautionary protocols set in place and we'll make sure that our guests are spoiled rotten as they deserve. Yeah, absolutely. I think people are just exhausted by doing all the cooking themselves, right? All the work. It'll be so nice to <laughs> have someone else treat them in that way. Good. Um, so traditionally, the business lunch has been a really big part of life in the financial district. And I'm very curious if you think this is a trend that you see people continuing to embrace once again as we move back into office life downtown. Um, Mark, I'll start with you maybe. Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, I believe there's going to be a huge uh, desire to be amongst one another again. I, I would think everybody's been on Zoom for the last year and a half. So I'm, I'm hoping there'll probably be smaller meetings, but we can space people out around the tables. And I think it's really essential that, that people get together, wear something other than their sweatsuit and uh, actually get out in public. So anybody that I speak to is, is so excited to start wearing a jacket again, uh, you know, a nice dress again, uh, to get into the office, to go for lunch, to socialize. So I think all those, those things uh, we took very much for granted but, you know when they're when they're stripped away boy oh boy absolutely and michael what are your thoughts on that idea you know the the uh the downtown lunch in the downtown financial core has been around forever it is not going to go anywhere anywhere anytime soon other than obviously during the COVID times so the minute 
the restrictions are lifted, I can see people getting back into having those business lunches. It becomes a little bit of an extension of their office. It is an opportunity to chat, uh, eat, enjoy the pleasures of uh, being around friends, colleagues, uh, your peers. Uh, and we need that that interaction as as human beings. We we want to be shoulder to shoulder in there where uh, the energy is is vibrant and positive. And having these business lunches is very much a part of the down tour. It's very much a part of the downtown financial core scene and vibe. Uh, and without that, it, it would just feel a lot less like an exciting city and Toronto is a very very exciting city to be a part of so uh, eat eat lots and enjoy it whether it's on the patio indoors in a private room I say can't wait for the restrictions to be lifted and uh, we'll be we'll be back at it taking care of our guests absolutely you don't have to tell me twice so uh, <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> sure um, I'm, I'm very curious also whether you think the upscale dining experience will change post-pandemic. Um, as we've seen, obviously, some restaurants have been pivoting a little bit in terms of offering meal kits and kind of pre-made pantry items and things like that. So, um, Michael, since I have you here, maybe I'll start with you. Do you think there are going to be any lasting changes as a result of the pandemic? That's a very interesting question. Um, my gut instinct, the answer there is again, no, I, I don't think it's it's going to change. Uh, if I take our restaurant in the downtown core that is is considered one of our, our high-end jewels in the crown of Oliver and Bonaccini, Canoe, it, it has suffered because there is no patio. Uh, it's up on the 54th floor. It's maybe a little more time consuming to get into the elevator as, as you're not allowed to have as many bodies in the elevator to take you up but i think the desire to go out and eat is going to transcend whether you choose a very casual dining experience a mid-range or high end i think we've all been at home cooking ourselves takeout opening up takeout containers doing our own dishes trying to plan what the next meal is going to be whether it's for the kids or your partner or the, the weekend up and coming and it's it's fatiguing it's tedious so the idea of going out to dine whether it's a high-end uh, dining room a mid-range dining room it's just the pleasure of not having to plan and organize other than make a reservation sit down sit back and enjoy the entire experience the only downside is uh, the individual who has to uh, pick up the check at the end of it, <laughs> especially if it's a McEwen restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only... Okay. okay. <laughs> you know I'm before, teasing. Before I ever adjust prices, I always check yours. <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> Indeed. Um, Mark, what about you? Do you see any lasting changes on your end there? No, I, I think fine dining is going to have a, a renaissance. I think people, when they go out, they want they want to have a special evening. So our experience has been at, at one in Yorkville and Bymark that the most extravagant specials off the board are selling like hotcakes. So we've never sold so much caviar, lobster, spot prawns, the best of the best of the best. People are people are really spoiling themselves. So again, that 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 just sort of speaks to the the other issue that there's there's so much pent up desire to get out of this rut we've been in for so long and very few people are going to be ordering meal kits going forward is my prediction as restaurants open up they're a bit tired of that uh, as zoom meetings will calm down and i believe sitting around a table will be exactly where people want to be and it's going to be for us to make sure that they're comfortable and that the protocol is there and that we stay on it and people wear masks for a while and get vaccinated and do all the things you need to do to uh, to stay safe. And I, I think that's the path back, but uh, our clients are ready for the fancy dinner, that's for sure. That's really interesting. I, I wouldn't have predicted that actually, but thanks for that. So lastly, 
Mark, since I have you here, I'll, I'll maybe direct this to you. Um, what role do you see restaurants playing in sort of the social and cultural recovery from COVID-19? Oh, I, I think the restaurant industry is, is so woven into the fabric of Toronto. It's such a food town, always has been. Uh, so much of social conversation is based around talking about which restaurant you, you went to last week and I heard this place was great and I had the most amazing piece of fish at this restaurant. So people want to get back to that. And I think, you know, sitting down and, and having conversations over food and having a bit of wine and talking politics, and there's lots to talk about in politics these days. I, I think that that is the social fabric of Toronto. So I'm, I'm very confident that it's going to bounce back and it may even bounce back stronger. You know, when I, when I look at the average spend that we have experienced with people coming back to the patios, it's exceeded any spend that I've ever seen in the past. So there's, there's just this massive pent up desire. It's like, you can almost hear the rumbling of it happening. And now that people are actually, we're getting vaccinations to the stage where it's really starting to make sense for us now. And double vaccinations were at 30%. So I'm, I'm assuming by end of summer, we can probably be at 60 and almost 100% vaccinated, except for the people that are, are choosing not to. Then we're back to normal. We're back to normal. And everybody's going to appreciate normal again. Everybody. Absolutely. Michael, what do you think about that, that role that restaurants are going to be playing in and beyond just an economic recovery, but also more of a, a social and a, a vibrancy recovery? I, I think the role that restaurants have played in the past and will play when things ease and we can dine more freely will be a huge positive uh, experience for anyone that decides to go out and dine. Uh, we, Everyone I speak to miss the most thing is dining out. So I think we're going to see a huge and, and, and ferocious return to out uh, to dining out. I think that the idea of dining with friends, neighbors, work colleagues, sharing a table together, breaking bread together is is a fundamental aspect of, of life that is, is so pleasurable and enjoyable. We want to be around interesting people, people that we love, people that we care about. We love to share stories, food, wine, uh, and all of that is given through the experience of dining at a restaurant. It's that hospitality side of things. Uh, you pick up onto that, the, the energy and vibrance of what's going on, some great music, uh, a, a wonderful backdrop of, of uh, a, a dining room or a view. It just adds to the entire pleasure. You know, eating is, is something obviously that is important to all of us, but when you go out to a restaurant and get spoiled in every way possible, then I just think it adds to one's life's enjoyment. And we have missed that so much. So many people have missed it. That once it comes back, it's gonna come roaring back. And I think it's gonna be exciting times. And every chef, cook, server, bartender, host is eager to welcome the dining guests back and uh, remind them of the good times that uh, we had prior to, to COVID. So bring it on. Yeah, that's a fantastic note to end on. Thank you, I appreciate it.